everyone, here is Iraima from Hands on the Art and today we are going to be working on our beautiful fall walk as you guys can see over there and um, I have Selena behind the cameras and she's going to be helping us with the recording so anyways, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we are going to need um, this is going to be acrylics, I am not protecting myself but I should, I should get an apron we are going to be working with acrylics and acrylics tend to stain your clothes so or any surface so make sure that you guys prepare your the table or protect anything that you guys are going to be using and um, because it can be hard to remove the acrylic from those surfaces or even from your clothing and um, what are going to be the brushes that we are going to be needing today i have three brushes here but you guys can totally do it with two so i am just using a round brush and this is a size six brush and this one is a flat a three quarters brush and and this one is a 12 size brush so it really can be two brushes a flat brush and a a, a round brush and i like to use this one yes it just helped me to move a little bit quicker through a larger surface right here we these are going to be the colors that we are going to be using we have a deep yellow chrome orange a bright red and this is a burnt amber black and white if you are using your own materials you can definitely find any colors that are similar to these colors that we have over here fall is always going to have a tones that are you know um, the same tones it doesn't matter the name but if you are giving your art kit through hands-on art you're going to be receiving these um, six colors okay so let's go ahead and talk about um, the process that we are going to use to create these I have divided these into six steps okay the first step is going to be creating the background and I don't know if you are able to see that but the background it has a little bit of a tint of yellow after we do the background we're going to start with the pathway and um, we are going to uh, continue working on the right side of the pathway and, um, and after we're going to move to the left side, we will add the trees, the fence, more foliage on the trees on the top, and the last is gonna be the little couple that is just right there on the back um, at the end of the pathway. And those are gonna be the steps that we're going to be using. So, but before we start working, I wanna show you guys the kind of stroke that we will be using for this as well. For the background, it's going to be just basically um, a side-to-side -side strokes. When we are doing the foliage, there are different ways to do it. In this case, because we are seeing them from the distance, we are going to basically just dab, okay? So I'm going to show you really quick over here what I mean with dabbing. So throughout the foliage, even the, the, the ground cover, this is going to be basically the strokes that we will be using okay we will just build 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 up in this kind of a stroke as you guys can see and stroking in different angles and not just doing it one in one angle or in one direction i wanted to do it in random directions and especially when we are going through the trees we wanted to kind of move our hands and move our wrist in different directions up upward downward up okay so anyways we wanted to move the brush in different directions so we can kind of accomplish that random natural look of the trees okay so well let me go ahead and remove these and we will be able to start something really important if you feel like i am going too fast the best news is that you can stop the video catch up and keep going or you can even rewind and go back so that is the nice thing about working with these videos that are just recorded for you to work on your own pace okay let's go ahead and start with the sky so oh i didn't mention that you are going to need a cup with water right here is my cup with water to rinse your brush and we're going to start by, by moist uh, getting a brush a little bit moist right there and i'm going to dip in a little bit of white the way that i like to place my colors my the yellow over here had like an explosion but the way that i like to place my colors is from light to dark okay 
So I'm going to start by dipping my brush in a little bit of white and a tiny, tiny bit of yellow. And I'm going to start right here on the sky. And that seems to be a little bit darker compared to what I have in there. That's not a problem if it is a little bit darker. Acrylic is just so great that you can always um, dip your brush in a little bit more of water and a little bit of white and you can definitely balance the tone as you um, as you desire okay so I'm going to keep moving over here this is why I love this long brush this large brush because it really allows me to work on the background and with ease I don't have to fill my background with a tiny teeny brush Right here, we are not creating any clouds. Um, this is going to be basically the background, so we don't mind much the strokes, mostly horizontal strokes. We just wanted to fill the area right here. And that is going to be basically covered by the trees. So I'm not to worry. I'm not to worry about the tones. The only thing that I wanted to emphasize a little bit more in here is, whoops. Okay, we're gonna be working, just moving your brushes across your background. And something that I wanted to emphasize is that in the original we have over there, we have a little bit of a transition from a, a, a little bit of the yellowish to a white color. You can choose how you want it. You can choose um, to have a little bit more of that yellow showing on the top. Um, this is something that really you can, you, you are owning this process. So you can definitely decide what do you want it to see in there. So in this case, I'm gonna try to emulate what I have on this example. And in order to do that, I'm gonna just apply a little bit more of yellow to my brush. And I'm gonna be brushing and brushing to bring that to a lighter tone, okay? Right there, perfect. As you can see, there is a little bit of a transition going from the little bit of a more obvious yellow to a light yellow and then white. Add more white on the very top over here. Perfect. So I'm going to bring this sky tone just like three quarters of my uh, area. Um, I wanted to call it a canvas. You guys are using a canvas. In my case, I am using a multimedia paper. And um, so anyway, so what I wanted to show you guys in here is that I'm dividing my area into probably third, this is a little bit more than third, third and um, third and so anyways, right here I have half. So probably you can keep it over here or just to be safe right there. So you can see if you leave a space in between the trees and the foliage that is going to be in the background, we don't have a gap. So I am trying to bring that white, white down in there. So I think that that is good in there. So now I'm going to start working with my pathway. When we work on, um, when we work with uh, landscapes that you can see, you know, there is the part that is going to be the foreground and the background. And um, in this case, the foreground is going to be my pathway and we have the background behind, right here, the foliage. So there is some sort of um, depth that we have to accomplish in order to make it look right. So in this case, what I wanted to focus is on creating, in the way that it comes forward to that fourth uh, ground, and um, the path is going to be wider. And in the way that it goes farther, I'm gonna make that thinner until it becomes just a line, okay? So I'm gonna show you how that will look like. So what I will do, I'm not, brushing, I'm not rinsing my brush, I'm gonna just use my brush straight as, he, as, uh, as I was working previously. I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of brown and I'm gonna start over here. Um, I don't want the pathway to be centered, so I'm gonna move it a little bit toward the side, okay? So if I will center it, it will be more over here. I wanted to just move it a little bit toward the side so it doesn't look too obvious, you know, that it was, that is on the very center. So just to add a little bit more of movement and, um, 
and I, it's just a matter of preferences and, and style. So now I dip in a little bit of yellow, as you can see. So something important to keep in mind when you are doing the pathway is how your, your stroke is coming, okay? So what I am doing right now, I'm basically the movement is coming from my shoulder. And I wanted to show you a different. You can, you can definitely just use your hand. And when you are using your hand, as you can see, my hand is kind of curving. It's creating a smiley face. You have to be careful with that because that won't create a kind of pathway that we wanted. So, and I can probably do the movement pivoting from um, or using as a pivot point my elbow and uh, right here I can accomplish that. Yeah, that, that can be, can be done. But sometimes it tends to um, push us on, a, on an angle. So it's going to kind of give us a weird look to it. So when you are doing this pathway, your stroke has to be absolutely horizontal. And when I say absolutely horizontal, absolutely horizontal in dimension with the paper or the area that you are working. So this will be a horizontal line. This can be, this is gonna be an angle line, and this can be something that my elbow can create. But when I um, create a horizontal stroke with my shoulder, I can guarantee that the line is gonna be absolutely horizontal. So I want you to explore that. Just to try with your wrist right here, smiley face, with your elbow can create an angle line. You don't want that. But when you do with your shoulder, you have more control of creating a horizontal line. So that's something for you to keep. That is um, a tip for you to learn also for future projects. So I'm going to again, I'm going to dip into a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my brown. And I'm going to keep my horizontal line. And in the way that I keep moving up, I'm going to bring the horizontal line to probably half of my uh, canvas, okay? So right here is my horizontal line, and in the way that I move up, my, I'm gonna create a more narrow stroke, okay? Right here, a more narrow stroke, as you can see over there. And right here, I'm going to throw a line. So that's going to be the end of my path, okay, the pathway. And again, I'm gonna dip over here in a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the brown. I can increase the size and I'm definitely going to increase the size. So this was my first strokes just to settle the area, just to mark the area that I'm going to be working on. Right here on my line, on my line right there. And I could totally have brought that uh, background a little bit down in there. I'm going to add a little bit more of water over there just to bring that to, to my pathway, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and work again on that pathway. As we can see, that pathway comes and curves a little bit. So we have to create those horizontal strokes allowing that little curve in there as well. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm going to dip in a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of my brown again. And each time, I think I'm going to add a little bit of red, just for fun. And um, this uh, part, this pathway over here, it has a lot of tones. So I'm going to increase over here the size of my pathway. Just a little bit over here. Just to start rounding my pathway and creating exactly that shape that I want. I'm going to add a little bit of red. and bring it a little bit over here and right here when I start moving toward my pathway. As you can see over here, I am starting to create a little bit of a curve, a little bit of a curve right there. And don't worry about those areas. If you can escape a little bit from the dimensions or the, the um, shape that you want it, don't worry because we're going to cover all of that with, with the ground, with the, what we see over there, all those tones of yellow and orange, so it's going to be covered, okay? So I'm gonna dip again in a little bit of my yellow, and in this case, again, on brown, 
and start creating a little bit more of definition. I am using my stroke coming from my shoulder, as I mentioned before, and it curves, and it moves, and it goes out in that little path. I'm going to dip now with a little bit of black because now that I know where I want it, I'm going to start just kind of creating a little bit more of the final look that I want. So right there, side to side, side to side, and in the way that we come over here, it's going to be darker. And just uh, keep a look at this really quick. Um, I am using the flat side of my brush, but when I get to the pathway, I turn the brush and I use just the narrow part of the brush. Right there. Okay, fantastic. We got it. We got it there. And again, don't worry about these shapes over here. We will work on those shapes as we add the rest of the colors. So after we have done that, oh, something that I noticed is that that pathway also extends a little bit over here. So let's go ahead and extend it a little bit. Okay, extend that a little bit. I love this uh, painting because it's just so easy, so easy and um, you don't have to be too uh, skilled to really create this and it looks so much complex um, than what it really is. I'm going to add a little bit more of black right there. I think that we got it. I can definitely add a little bit of red over here, but later we are going to come in and add more of those tones in. So I don't want to worry too much. We are still on the first stage. This one is actually the second step, okay? So we still have four more steps. So you guys can see how this is going to evolve. And um, so now, because my brush still have some darker tones, I'm gonna to just clean my brush over here because as you guys see over there, and I'm gonna dab, dab, dab. As you guys see on the original example, it has some sort of a darker tone in there. And um, okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. I don't want it to be absolutely clean. Just gonna rinse it to remove the black from it. Um, so I can start layering the um, yellow tones. So I'm gonna dip in white and my yellow, and I'm gonna start over here, and I'm going to just dab. I can start actually from the very top over here. Just dab, 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 dab. And if we see right there, there is a lot of orange in there. So I'm gonna dip in a little bit of my yellow and a little bit of orange. Let's start playing with the orange right there and we're going to be dabbing and dabbing something about this painting and i wanted to warn you there is going to be a time a moment that you might feel like what is this this it doesn't look any or am i going to really get this done it just looks so um messy and crazy i want you to trust me it's a total process in here so it's gonna be a total process for you to come from point one to point three and from point three to point five and six. So it's gonna be a process. So just trust the process, okay? I'm gonna dip again in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange. And I'm gonna keep just dabbing. When I, when I am dabbing, I am creating really small strokes. Dab, 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 and I'm not even moving right now my dabbing process into be a little bit of a roundy dabbing um, a stroke, okay? Right here, a little bit, I'm adding a little bit more of yellow and a little bit more of orange. And dab, dab, dab. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now as I can see over there, there is a little bit of red on that area over there. I can add the red, actually let's add the red later. Let's go ahead and keep working with our orange and our yellow. I'm gonna be moving now into white and yellow because I see that in the way that I am coming closer to the 
foreground. Um, the, uh, the ground over there, it looks more like a lighter, like a lighter tone. So again, I'm gonna keep moving my brush and I'm gonna add some white in some parts. As you can see right there, I just left those strokes there and no blending then. Something really important also um, to keep in mind when you are uh, painting this, pro this project, your project might look like mine or it might look something completely different. And um, we all stroke different. But um, at the end, the, like the look is going to be the same. But everybody tends to uh, stroke in a different way. We have different instructors here at Hands on Art, and we all, when we all are trying to create a project that it was done by another instructor, it looks always a little bit different. And that has to do with the way that we stroke. We all stroke different, even though we are trying to create the same project. It's going to look a little bit different. Okay, right there. So we create this part over here. Um, I was waiting a little bit to get into this side of the path because I added red recently and I didn't want it to I didn't want it to um, get my brush with red which shouldn't be a big deal shouldn't be a big deal because all these tones that we have over here are pretty similar now I'm gonna dab in a little bit of red right here and this is for that tree that we have right there that tree the lawn the tall tree that we have in there that i'm kind of creating the space for it and um and i'm going to add a little bit of yellow on top of it just to kind of minimize that strong contrast that we have in there just to make it a little bit more subtle right there okay and I see another part over here that is where the other three is. I will assume that the red is the masses of red that we have in there. It has to do with um, with the trees leaving their leaf, losing their leaf, so they are all accumulated in that area. So again, I'm gonna it comes a little bit on an angle like that. Again, I'm doing really short strokes, and I am using the very corner of my brush. Okay. The very corner of my brush okay so now what i'm going to be doing um because i have i have quite a good contrast with orange i can add a little bit more of orange in this area let me add that in that area and after we are going to move into intensifying that tone of red so we can leave our right side already and we can move to the other side and keep just working how fun is this i'm just pretty relaxing nothing should be stressful about this and like I say just trust the process it is the process in here going on so you want to make sure that you trust the process now I'm going to make sure that this red is a little bit darker and in order to attain that I want to dip my brush in a little bit of red and a tiny teeny bit of black I'm going to tap, tap, tap in here. And that is going to create that deeper, that deeper uh, tone right there. I can do this right now or I can do it later. Um, so anyways, right here. Oops, that looks super dark. What am I going to do in there? Well, don't worry about it. The fun thing about acrylics is that you can totally layer um, tones. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange to reduce that tone over there right there again what we are doing in here is just layers of tones and when they are all together they create exactly what we are looking for for that image right here okay so let me go ahead and i'm going to start moving more toward this area over here so this area over here it has some dark polish right there so I'm going to just add more um, red and black but I'm going to first I'm going to stop for a second and um, and I'm going to look into 
the trees over there. So in order for us to make these trees look um, like there is a distance, right? There is a depth in here. And um, we really wanted to, let me add a little bit more of this lighter tone over here. Just around the path over here. So I can start working on creating that round, round, round line in there, okay? So sorry, I took you from one point over there to this part over here. I just saw this part over here and I thought, let's make sure that we are working because I know that your eyes are totally in this painting and if you saw that part over there I wanted to make sure I address that um, as quick as possible so you know that we are good we are good we are going in the direction on of creating this exactly painting and um, I'm gonna be switching my brush for the moment so I can create more of that stroke, round stroke that you see on the trees on the top. And for that, I'm gonna be using my 12 a size flat brush or shader. And um, so in order to create that depth uh, look, right? We have the darker tones and it seems like we can even light it up the pathway. Um, a little bit more so we're going to create a, a we're going to be adding the darker tones and also a mix with the lighter ones and when it comes to the four a ground I will say um, of the of the trees we're going to add even lighter tones and that is going to help to see to to give that impression of the deepness of the tree right the shaded part versus the highlights, okay? The highlights, the areas where the sun is touching the tree versus the areas where the sun can't reach. So um, we're gonna start with the yellow again. And I'm gonna just move over here, creating a base with yellow. Now my stroke is more like wrapping, okay? It's still dabbing, but I am adding a little bit of a twist. Okay, right there. Just tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to this area over here. Okay, just a little bit of orange. And I am dabbing, right here, this is a form of dabbing, but right here I am just wrapping a little bit of my stroke. And I want my strokes also to be really, um, random i wanted to cover the whole area but i wanted to be random in the in in process in direction so right here for the yellow base that i am creating it's going to be all yellow and roundy i'm going to do it just about this area over here so i can have the trees coming and having less clumps of um, leaf okay masses of leaf and um, so we can also be able to see, to appreciate right there the sky, okay? So right here, so this is good of okay. when it comes to yellow. Probably I'm gonna add a little bit more over here and I'm gonna add orange. This orange, again, this is my stroke. I just touch, wrap, wrap, wrap. Just wrap, wrap, wrap. Being really random right here, rounded. So you don't want it to create a block, you don't want it to create a, like a ball neither, right? Because this is not what we see in there. We see a really natural growth of the trees. So the trees come and they kind of come over here and they get lost on our window, right? Right here, stop. And right here, this is the random part that I wanted to um, emphasize. I just show this stroke over here. You see this gap over here. You see this gap over here. You wanted to keep that random, random view. I'm gonna add more orange, and I'm gonna start adding a little bit of red to match the tones that we see in there. So I did orange and red. Right there. I'm going to go a little bit slower so I can be more intentional when I add those masses right here. Okay, 
again a little bit of orange and a little bit of red really intentionally here I see some lighter tones in there. I'm going to add a little bit of white to match those lighter tones that I see in there. And those are really important because like I mentioned before, there are going to be areas that we wanted to depict as the highlights, right? Where the sun is able to touch those areas versus deeper areas on the trees that are not shaded. The sun is not able to reach that far. So that's what is going to help us in here to create a sense of depth where we see far and close. We add a little bit more of orange. I just add orange in here. Dip a little bit more of orange. And now I'm gonna go strong with the, um, let me add a little bit more of Y over here so we can emulate whatever is going on in there. Okay. So now I'm gonna go a little bit more uh, strong with the tones to create that darker red brownish or burgundy color. So in order to do that, I'm gonna just dip in my red and I'm gonna dip in a little bit of black and I'm gonna tap, 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 super strong in there, but no worries. We can add a little bit more of red and let's go ahead and start right here, tiny, teeny spots. And as my brush loses, And again, I'm wrapping my movements right now. I'm more wrapping right here. I see some darker tones. And I'm going to add a little bit of red so I can create more of a, that nice transition. It can be really right here. Really random. Really random. I'm going to bring that. This is the part when I was saying, just trust the process. There is a moment that you might stop and say, oh my gosh, this doesn't look um, like we are going in the right direction. You are, you are. When it comes to measuring, all these strokes are gonna add up and they are going to create that exactly view that you want or that exactly painting that we are trying to recreate in here. So as you can see over here, there are some dramatic steps from red to the orange. We don't want those to prevail in there. So in order to create, minimize those contrasting spots, we just add a little bit of orange so we can blend a little bit more, okay? Just add a little bit of orange. And even a little bit of yellow and that really help to light up those tones, okay? Actually, the yellow is a better transition because yellow and red make orange, so it's going to really help right there. Let me just add a little bit, strokes over here, strokes over there. Okay, fantastic. So now I'm gonna to move to the other um, side and that's going to be our this one is our third step so we're going to be moving to the other side that's going to be our fourth step right there a little bit over here again again is just trying to emulate what i am seeing in there and we can add more as we go okay right there that's good we can light up a little bit more or we can add more. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to just add a little bit of tones around this area over here, just to create a nice step transition. Add a little bit of white right there. And especially around this pathway, and adding a little bit of red and a little bit of white if the red seems to be too dark, and adding a little bit of white. And, um, and my stroke is tiny, teeny, and reducing the size of my that circular stroke, reducing that step. 
I'm minimizing that by using the very tip, the very corner of my brush. Right there. Nice, nice. Okay, that's looking good. Let me come over here. And I see a lot of white, more white over here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of yellow. That seems to be really, really strong. I don't want that to be that strong. Right here, and I'm gonna add a little bit more of yellow in this part, just to blend, to blend a little bit more. The yellow really helped to blend the red. It helped to blend the orange. It helped to blend the white. So really the yellow is the star of this process. Right there, guys. So we're gonna leave it that way for right now. And we're gonna start tapping into the other side, okay? And uh, don't worry much, much about um, what we see over here, if it's not precise as what we see on the side. We are moving, we are moving uh, progressively toward creating all these layers um, and after it will be all incorporated as we add more elements to it. Okay, guys, we are in the, in the half of our project, okay? So now we're gonna be working with our fourth step that is going to be creating basically the sideways over here, all this, the left side, the same thing that we did on this side, but it's gonna be now on this left side of the painting. <clears throat> After that, we are going to be doing the trees and the last thing is going to be the lily couple on the back. So we are halfway there. So to uh, continue working on this area, we're going to um, use, I'm going to be using my small brush, okay, the flat uh, 12 in, uh, size brush. And I'm going to dip in a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. I wanted to add a little bit of white because that will help us to cover a little bit more and to fix anything around the pathway. So um, let's go ahead and just check over here again. My strokes are going to be just wrapping, wrapping, small, tiny, dabbing and wrapping strokes over here. And it's gonna go around the pathway. You don't want it to be too stray, okay? You want it to break in a little bit into the pathway. So it looks just to add a little bit more of dimension. And um, okay, let's go ahead and keep adding over here. And in the way that we move over here, we just kind of get a little bit lost in right here, right there. Let me add a little bit more of yellow especially when it comes closer over here. A little bit more of yellow. So I started with a little bit of white and now I am adding just yellow. I'm doing my wrapping strokes. Okay, nice. And again, I'm breaking a little bit into the pathway so it doesn't seem like it's just a straight line. And once I am here, I can totally fix the other side, okay? So even though we are ready that we are ready now with the other side, but we can come in, just add a little bit more of the tone, especially if the tone is already on a brush, okay? So now we're going to start adding a little bit more of orange um, on this area over here, yellow and orange. I dip in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange right there. Something to keep in mind here, as we are coming, as we are coming, the tones that we are creating, uh, for example, the, the we're gonna be moving into orange and after into red. So they are gonna be wider, and in the way that it comes over here, it's gonna come to the line, to the horizon line. There is kind of horizon line over here. So it's gonna be wider again, and it's gonna come narrow. And we're gonna try to keep then a little bit on an angle a little bit on an angle, but keeping in mind the perspective. Um, that is going to be mostly when we are doing the trees, the perspective of the horizontal line, when we're going to create the base of the trees. But right now it's going to be a wider and it comes narrow, keeping the horizon line, okay? So um, I'm going to keep adding a little bit more of orange 
this one, this part over here, yellow and orange. We wanted to create a transition. We don't want it to jump in from yellow into orange, just like that, okay? Right here, more orange. Using my wrapping strokes, a little bit more of yellow and a little bit more of orange. Right here, just wrapping, wrapping strokes. Here. Okay, now we're going to start incorporating from orange. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow, orange, and a little bit of red. So right here, we're going to start incorporating the red in it. I'm going to do just yellow and red right now. The yellow really helped to blend, to blend into that orange. And in the way that it's coming lower over here, the path uh, into the pathway, over here it started wider and it's gonna come narrow, okay? That's what I basically mean when I share with you guys a second ago, the wider are coming and narrow, okay? So that orange is going to come and close a little bit more into the yellow. To a part over here where you see just a tiny, tiny bit of the yellow. So again, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow and a little bit of the red. And we're going to intensify the tone of the red in a second, adding more brown. And the reason why we wanted to do that is um, on that area over there, it looks like it's a really shaded area. And in order to give that impression, we need to add a little bit of black to the red. So it's the area where the sun is no, it's basically not touching. So right here, it's going to be expanding a little bit. Let me check on that to check the tone of it. It's gonna expand a little bit. So right now I am using more of dabbing, the dabbing stroke, and um, and I am using again I am brushing in random directions. Okay, so in the way that it gets farther, we're going to be using that stroke. I'm going to be adding a little bit of orange as well, just for blending, right there, and a little bit of orange over here, just for blending. Okay. So, in the way that we move up, right here, we're going to go back into the red tone. And we will create, we will soften that transition there again. We don't want it to go from one tone to the other one so dramatically, right? We want it to create a transition. I am using whatever leftover goes of yellow and even why on my brush. I think that one of the things that I like about this project is that you don't have to rinse the brush. And um, you just go from, from one tone to the other one. No much need to rinse the brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more of orange in this part over here. And dab, 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 dab. Come over here. Now a little bit of my red and a little bit of that darker tone. I'm just gonna build that a little bit more, a little bit more higher and trying to see where we are at. Oh, this is good, over here is good. But when it comes over here, I have to build more of that dark. Where the couple is walking over here. So a little bit of red and a little bit of that black. So now I'm going to 
I start lighting up that color a little bit more. So um, in order to do that, I'm gonna be adding more orange to it. This orange. Orange. over here I basically use those two strokes back and forth and um, especially for these larger areas um, now I'm just dabbing 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 Um, let's see, we're going to be using orange and a little bit of that uh, yellow, okay? Okay, perfect. So over here, when we are coming to the part of the foliage, and we want in there to use the wrapping strokes, okay? Just wrap, 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 stroke. Okay, right here. Okay, and I'm gonna stop right there for a second. And um, let me add a little bit more of yellow. Okay, right there. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm going to stop for a second and I'm gonna um, take a look at and see where we are at now. We need to add the trees. I'm gonna add a little bit more of yellow. To the background and after we're going to add the trees and we're going to add more uh, foliage on top of those trees okay so let me go ahead and add a little bit more of that yellow right here and i'm not even brushing i'm not even i'm sorry uh, washing my rinse in my brush i just wanted to just move and right now as i move out i'm going to be dabbing dab 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 and dab in different directions. This, this, this direction. So I'm basically using the two strokes, but in here, in order to keep my uh, foliage um, lighter and smaller, I am using the dabbing, okay? I can have more control, and I'm sure that you can have more control of, over the masses of trees when you use the, yellow, the dabbing, okay? here okay guys we're moving quick now we are starting to move a little bit quicker so let's see this is the part where that tree is going so again dab 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 different random directions dab 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 okay and i'm going to stop right there I'm going to check and see if I need to do anything else. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to this part over here. I notice that there is some white there. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow too. Just a little bit of white and yellow. And I'm going to start working right now um, on the trees. So right here, a little bit more of white. Right there. Let's add a little bit more of white. Right there. A little bit more of white. Oops. Over here. I, I was trying to use my brush. When I try to do these really gentle strokes, I lose my brush too. I hold my brush even lighter. Right there. Right here. Just a little bit more of that lighter or vibrant tone right there okay guys i think we are ready to move into the trees and after we're going to do the fence so the trees is going to be the step number five we are almost there so let's go ahead and move to the trees um i'm going to wipe a little bit my brush i don't want it to rinse it i like to have all those tones on my brush and it really helped me to to add a little bit more of character to the strokes. And um, let me see over here, I'm gonna start with the tree that we have right here and after the ones behind. So to do that, 
I'm going to um, just dip my brush in a little bit of white, right here, a little bit of white and brown, okay? So this is, um, I don't wanna add a little bit of black, why not? Just one step. So what I do, I'm gonna be using the really narrow part of my brush and I'm gonna use it as a pencil to basically draw all my, to draw my trees. My um, hand grip is, is kinda shaky. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is kinda shaky, it's hard for me. And um, some people, they are really good and they have really sturdy hand. Mine is not. So, and that's why I like to do this. And I also find that if I go faster, I can keep a straight line. If I stop and I start going slow, I it gets even more shaky. So I try to just go straight. And I like to use that angle because it does also help me quite a bit. So right here, something that I wanted to share with you when, I don't know if that happened to you, but when I was little and I will create trees, I will start with the trunk and I will add more and add more to the trunk because I wanted to fix one side or the other side and after I will end having this thick, super thick trunk. So that taught me that when I'm gonna create a tree, I better start small and if I wanted to add to it, um, it's better to add from small, tiny tree than to take from a thick, chunky tree, right? Okay, so now, once we are in here, Something that we wanted to do is, oh, hold on, let me just get my lines over here, all straight, right here. Okay, right here. There you go. That's why I love these brushes so much. They are awesome. So we can definitely, um, we, we are gonna choose what size the light is gonna hit, hit the tree. So whatever side the light is gonna hit the tree, we can definitely add a little bit of white and a little bit of brown right there. So I'm gonna decide that the tree is gonna be hit by the right the right side. It's gonna be where the lighting is gonna come. Right there. Really nice. And um, and at the at the opposite side, I'm gonna add a little bit more of black. So that will help me to depict the shaded area right there so hey guys we have our first tree and we could totally have to start with the smaller one from the back to the front but i was so excited to get that one done he's just like the main one he's just like hello here i am that one and the one on the side over here that like they are still in the show from the little ones so okay guys i'm gonna go ahead and do the little ones over here so without rinsing my brush and something that I do, I basically tap, tap, tap the brush. And when I do that, it helps me to create a really thin um, brush where all the bristles are all tapped together. So, and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my brush. Tap, 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 both sides. And I'm gonna work on this guy over here. So let's see, he's going to come from here, right here right here and I can add definitely more leaf on top of it right here it looks a little bit inclined I don't have to do it inclined and um, and now I'm gonna work on the ones that are behind behind the thick the big one right here so this is gonna come this way and this one of course is going to be smaller right here so again a little bit of white and a little bit of brown and i want to add some highlights right here so we know we decide right here where the lighting is coming to the tree and the lighting is coming from the right side and after with a little bit of brown and black, I'm going to create some shaded areas. What do you think about this, Alina? Have you done some acrylics before? Oh, I worked with watercolor um, in high school, oh, which was so hard. 
I guess. Watercolor can be hard. For, some people think it's hard. To me, watercolor is one of my favorite mediums. And actually, I love it a lot. It's, isn't that? It's just so. Um, whoop, that has a lot of white on it. I'd like to do more with acrylic, though. Acrylics is, is fun. Watercolor is too. And um, I think that depends how you approach to it. Um, it's not going to be a realistic look where you get with watercolor. You can, but you have to be so precise, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and here I'm gonna add the other one behind, but um, I don't know, and watercolor used to be my favorite medium. But acrylics now is just so fun, so easy to fix also. So easy to fix when you keep your trunk small. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you um, start with a big chunky trunk, it's gonna be hard. Right here. So. Add some highlights. Some white and uh, tap, tap, tap. That white, I think I got too much. The other day, I, I was looking at this video, it was a Japanese video, and this guy was using, a, I don't know how it's called, it's like, like a, it was like a stick that he had that is connected somewhere, and he helped his hand to be absolutely straight. So huh. it was like, wow, we need to find, figure out what is that, because that will solve my problem, and I'm sure that many of you guys too. And uh, if you guys are like me, if you struggle with a sturdy hand, that will be ideal. So I was looking at it and I was like, what is he using? But you hardly uh, could see it. He was drying and you will see just the corner of the wooden dowel, something like that, that it was connected somehow into his easel. So pretty cool. Right there, we have the trees, perfect. And, um, and there are many other trees over here. Let's go ahead and add those ones. So there is one somewhere over here, that's that one. And there is another one over here. And that one, it can split a little bit. And um, I'm gonna add a little bit more brown. In the way that you are farther, those trees are not going to be as dark, okay? They can fade a little bit. So you have to use more of the brown. Right there, so that's perfect. So I'm gonna create right here the second tree. And I could totally use my other brush to do this, the round brush, that could help me quite a bit too. Um, but I, the angle of the flat brushes, they, they make me feel safe. So isn't that crazy? Sometimes you just kinda, yeah, and certain things make you feel more. <laughs> comfortable than others so okay so right here let's go ahead and talk about the um, the horizontal line okay so right here we have the pathway over here and uh, we wanted to keep the horizontal line when we are placing the trees okay so right here these trees are in this horizontal line so there are other trees that are going to be a little bit lower so this I'm gonna start right here for the other trees okay start right here and make sure that you keep that space for the fence there's gonna be a fence coming in there I'm gonna add just brown because in the way that they are farther like I mentioned before they um, they are going to be um, a little bit more faded so instead that dark um, black so here is another tree. And again, they don't have to be exactly in the same place. And uh, we wanted just to make sure that we are guiding you through this. And here I probably need to add a little bit more of leaf. And we will take care of that in a second. 
So right here, they have this tree coming over here. The next tree is going to be a little bit below. And I wanted to keep a line over here that is where my fence is going to go, okay? My fence is gonna go in here. So I wanna make sure that all the trees are going to be behind my fence, okay? Right here. So the other tree is gonna be a little bit below. here so this tree is going to come and it kind of splits a little bit right here yeah next time you probably you guys probably will see me using my my good in um how did i call it like a good in tool I'll tell you how that work. I'll tell you how that will work. I really, I really wanted to look more into it. I think it can be ideal. The next tree. Well, there are two trees that come over here and they are pretty close together. So this, this one, there is another one that is, that is way below that is next to it, just next to it. And in the way that we are coming closer to this part, those, the thickness of those trees is going to be um, it's going to be wider. Okay, right there. Okay, so this one is another one. And again, this is the line. I just kind of check my line because you want to make sure that those trees are absolutely vertical and they are starting from a horizontal point. That really makes a difference. Um, I have seen people just kind of getting the trees a little bit on, a, on an angle and that throws completely off the path that we are trying to create in here. So right here, it's going to be the older tree and this is going to be a little bit thicker because it's coming closer to our, um, it's coming closer to our foreground. That tree seems to be a little bit darker too. Whoa, right there I went, I went thick on that one. So I'm gonna tap, 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 tap with a little bit of black. And now as we come closer, like I said before, the fun part about acrylics is that you can totally fix things. So I can add more foliage around that thick line that I created. There are certain things that you can definitely fix. And um, right here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to the other side of the tree. No, as much as why as the other ones. But I'm gonna mix a little bit of white. Oops, that one went way too, too lighter, too light. Okay. Right here. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and there is another one. Right, let's see, we have four trees over here. There are a few behind. And um, so I'm going to create this one over here. Okay, so let's see over right here. And we have the thick one. The core star just next to the other one. Again, over here, this is the horizontal line. This one is going to break a little bit more from a little bit forward. For that one, I am using the flat sides of my brush. And in the way that I am coming over here, I'm gonna use swish. Swish right here to the Swish, 
switching to the angle size to the, to the narrow side over here. Going to get right here. This one is kind of too dark. I'm gonna add a little bit of a lot of brown. And again, this one is a little bit closer so I can play with by adding white and, um, and a little bit of gray. We are going to create a fence in segment as it is, right? As it was filled manually in there. So we are going to start over here with, um, oh, something really important. As we created the um, trees coming in a completely vertical way, we have to build also the fence, the poles that sustain the fence in that vertical angle um, matching the trees, okay? Otherwise, it's going to throw off the the perspective in here. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, line up the um, poles right here. This is going to be my first pole right here, okay? I can increase the size if I want it. Again, it's much easier to increase the size when they are small than bringing a wider a pole to a smaller pole, right? And this one is going to be smaller. And again, this is going to be a line that I'm looking into a horizontal line. And now my next horizontal line is going to be right here. And this pole is going to be smaller, okay? Smaller, shorter than this one. So that is placed in this horizontal line. The next pole, let's see, is going to be right here. And it's going to be in this horizontal line. And in the way that those poles are coming, the distance is going to be closing even more. Closing and closing and closing, okay? So right here I have the, I have two more. So the next one is going to be just about this part over here. And it's going to be smaller. And the distance as well is gonna be smaller. So, and I'm gonna do the last one is gonna be, actually there are two more here uh, probably right here probably right there perfect so now what i'm going to do i'm going to add a little bit of white a little bit of brown and a little bit of white to my brush so i can create those horizontal lines and I'll, let me go ahead and get a little bit comfy over here because again when it comes to lines we have to, we want to make sure that they are straight so i'm going to start the bottom line it's going to be right here and it's when they go over that tree, okay? So that one has quite a wide, no, no big deal. We are going to add some brown over and we're gonna be adding again some black as well. So in the way that it comes over here, it's gonna be wider, okay? And in the way that it comes up, it's gonna be narrow. So the fun thing about this fence is that it really allows you to fix a lot of um, irregularities that you might add because um, you don't have that much of experience working or adding that, that kind of a line. So anyways, right here we can increase the size or minimize a little bit of size with, by adding a little bit of white or by adding a little bit of black. So right here, if I wanted to increase the size, I'm going to be adding a little bit more of black on the pattern. And if I wanted to reduce the size, I wanted to, I can add a little bit of white on the top. So the black is going to be on the bottom because it just kind of depicts that shaded area. Okay, right here. Okay, I'm going to change my brush right now. I love that, um, actually, I'm going to keep using the brush and after I'm going to shade it when I'm going to change it to the small brush when I am using it uh, to do the shaded and the highlights. For my hand grip, I think it can be much more beneficial so I can have more control. So right here, this one is going to come over here. But I love the shaded because it really helped me to create a straight horizontal line. So if you have that problem, like me, using the shader, it really helps. Okay, right here. 
and also by changing a little bit the angle of the fans, it does help right here, it does help with the curve, okay? So, okay, now let me just try a little bit of what brown. More brown. It's going to be on the top. More brown. Right there. Okay. So now I'm going to add my, I'm going to use my brown brush and um, to just add a little bit of it shades on the top of the fence. Right there, right there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of brown. So that shaded part is not as. Right there. Tap, tap, tap. I don't want a pure white there. the intensity of the Y, so it doesn't look that. Um, contrasting in there. Okay, guys. This one over here, it looks a little bit too dark. That I have done that you guys can keep going and adding fixing more details fixing more of that or adding more highlights like over here we can definitely add a little bit more of highlights okay let's see over here just to make him look more accurate when it comes to nature. Okay. I think that this is the really the fun part, how it kind of everything kind of takes shape. Okay, so um, let's see over here. So now we can just add and fix things as we desire. Just light up a bit of my my trail. This trail absolutely looks like one of the trails that we have here in Farmington. We are in Utah, so we do um, have. We are so lucky to have that a beautiful change of leaf season, fall. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse my brush. And what, I, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just add any foliage that I want on top of the trees right here. Just add more, just to create more of that natural, realistic look. Okay, right here. Just add more leaf as you please. And um, we really can take hours in here, hours. And I think that that's one of the parts that I, li I love about these kind of classes that you can, you can choose um, how long you want to invest in this. You can totally decide, you know, I'm going to just work this many hours, you stop for, for that time and after you can re retake your project and keep working and that's how you learn quite a bit. Okay, let's see over here. Sorry, a little bit more over here. And a little more over here. So this part over here. 
here. It looks a little bit more like pinkish right here. Let me just add a little bit more of that. Okay, guys, I think that we are good. Oh, we are, we need to add this little couple that we have on the back. Let's not forget that. That was the final, the, the last step. So again, um, when I am drawing, when I am creating, especially these little figures, I start with little tiny dots, okay? So you want to make sure that, um, you want to make sure that you start with small so you can increase, okay? So I see over here, so I'm going to create over here the lady. So it's just like, I'm going to create it. a circle, a little small dot. And, um, and after it will add, over here, it seems like she seems like to have blonde hair on a skirt. Using the thin brush, I want to create a figure. So we are just creating a little bit like a figure. Right here. So you can do just the head, a dot for the head, a little rectangle for the torso, and um, the way that you are moving. For the boy, so we're going to create a small, a little bit taller. I would say more like a triangle shape over there for his chest. So it's just basically silhouettes what you create in there. Well, that's it. I'm so glad that you guys joined us. And if you guys wanted to keep watching more of, or find more about these videos, so check on their website or also on our YouTube, Hanson Art for Everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today.